Hi, I'm John Mahoney, founder of Atomic Coffee Roasters. John, thanks for taking the time to join me today and share your story a little bit. Uh, let's start off by talking about system selection. Obviously, you've got many different options when it comes to cold brewing. How'd you end up landing on the Cold Brew Avenue stainless steel cold brew system? Uh, you know, it was definitely uh, um, uh, an exercise in, in scaling and growth. I think like most people, uh, we started out uh, not knowing where we'd end up, so to speak. So we were in three buckets, multiple buckets, and then you know, quickly realized that's not scalable, uh, having just a bunch of buckets around uh, in brewing in that method in terms of actual scale and actually, you know, a CIP and SIP, you know, plastic is, is difficult uh, to maintain with, with the spigots and everything, pulling them apart on a nightly basis, etc. So, you know, we, we grabbed a, a 30 gallon unit, tried that out, uh, made some adjustments on it uh, in terms of recipe and uh, how we wanted to brew because we knew we we're going to quickly outgrow that and scale into a, uh, a 50 gallon unit. Um, and so we had a, a full immersion filter. Those worked well, but they were tough, tough to clean. Uh, and then you guys figured it out uh, and made life much easier for us and with, the, uh, with the false bottom and rubber gasket. Uh, so we converted all of our all of our units to that, uh, and just made cleaning and and scaling in terms of brewing and dilution that much more easy. Well, let's talk about scaling a little bit because you've done it well. You currently brew in a fifteen thousand square foot dedicated cold brew facility. Can you talk about when you started using the Cold Brew Avenue cold brew systems and how they've helped you scale up to your current capacity? 2015, I want to say. We started out with a 30 gallon unit, uh, quickly outgrew that uh, and bought our first 50 gallon unit. Uh, and from there, we scaled from one to five of them uh, in a very small production room at our roastery. And we kind of proved our model uh, on you know, brewing in, in the Cold Brew Avenue systems, figuring out distribution, sales, etc., cetera. Uh, and from there, it helped us scale to a 15,000 square foot facility. Well, we're ecstatic to see that you've been able to grow and scale using these cold brew systems. But now that you've got the ability to produce hundreds, if not thousands of gallons of cold brew daily, do you still find any use for the Cold Brew Avenue cold brew systems? In, in our current production facility, we have several brew houses, 10 barrel, uh, 25 barrel brew house, uh, and we still have five of your kettles that are now several years old. Uh, we use them all the time for various reasons. Um, you know, we still pilot, you know, new Copac customers for ourselves on those kettles. So they send us a small amount of coffee that we can brew. Uh, in the Cold Brew Avenue systems, um, we, you know, we use the, you know, the false bottoms, you know, just how you buy them uh, and how they're sent to you. And we're able to, you know, can people's or keg people's uh, coffee off of that and send it back to them. So you have, they have an idea and can sign off on taste and TDS, et cetera. Uh, and they've worked really well for us in that regards uh, to signing new clients. That's great to hear that they still get use uh, for what they were designed for even next to your giant production tanks. Before I let you go, is there anything else that you can share on um, you know, how you might use them in your current production facility? Uh, we also use them for a few other various reasons. Uh, they are fantastic for actually brewing cold brew teas and same, we can use the, uh, we alternate depending on the teas, uh, you can still use the, the false bottom or sometimes if it's loose leaf tea, we use our full immersion filters uh, in conjunction with the Cold Brew Avenue kettles uh, and do 50 gallon cold brew tea runs to either keg or can for ourselves and Copac customers. And the final reason we use them is if we're just doing blending in them, which we use, um, you know, several times a week. If we're just doing, you know, blending, you know, while we do have a, a canning line and do everything in house, we also have a uh, 12 head uh, bottling line uh, and everything goes into plastic bottles and HPP'd. So if we're actually um, mixing products, because we have a... Uh, our SKUs in that lineup are black coffee, uh, a latte, an unsweetened latte uh, in a mocha, uh, 
a cold brew coffee and chocolate milk, which is delicious. Uh, so we actually use those kettles for blending. So we take our cold brew, we can put our milks in there, uh, we can mix them up and then pump to the bottling line, just gravity feed off the, off the kettles and, you know, into a pump and um, you know feed our bottling line or if we're canning we do similar things if we're just doing pilot runs um, you know if we have an interesting single origin coffee and we don't want to you know put it in a bright tank just because it's a small run we'll actually use the Cobra Avenue kettles and just gravity feed right into our uh, wild goose canning unit that is so great I'm, I'm glad they're not just sitting on the shelf somewhere and geez, all these uh, cold brews that you guys make sound amazing. I wish they were distributed out here in California. John, thanks again for taking the time to join us and uh, just kind of tell us your experiences using the Cold Brew Avenue cold brew systems. Appreciate you taking the time. If you're still listening to this, you can check out John's story at kegoutlet.com slash atomic. You can also find the Cold Brew Avenue cold brew systems at kegoutlet.com or at coldbrewavenue.com.